Make sure and check out my entire Facebook ads playlist and my entire Instagram ads playlist. And I say Facebook ads, I bring that into this conversation because Facebook ads is where you should be running your Instagram ads from. Uh, so when you go check out my Instagram ads playlist to watch some of those videos, you'll definitely hear me say this in those videos, but do not use the blue promote button inside of your Instagram ad, inside of your Instagram app to run Instagram ads. It is not the best way to run those ads. And it, basically what it boils down to is that you're gonna be spending more money. It's gonna cost, it's gonna be more expensive basically to do it that way. The main reason that I really recommend that you go, well, two reasons. One, it's super important the audience that you're showing your ad to. It's also just as equally important what the ad is that you're showing to them. But inside of just the promote button inside of the Instagram app, the targeting, the level and filters of audiences that you can choose to target to show your ad to is very limited. And you wanna really be doing that targeting from inside of Facebook ads. The second reason is because once you learn how to run Facebook ads, you know how to run Facebook ads, which is a great skill to have nowadays. You know, maybe you know, maybe you're just doing this just for your own solo Instagram page, whatever. But you'll have a skill to run real advertising online using the biggest advertising platform, frankly, which is Facebook ads and Instagram ads because they're all rolled into the same thing. So great to have that skill. Great to be able to say you know how to run Facebook ads and Instagram ads, and it's really just a difference of one click when you're choosing where you want Facebook to show your ads. So. I'm gonna be showing you how to run Instagram ads from inside of Facebook ads. So what we're gonna do is you have to create a campaign and then inside of a campaign, you have an ad set and then inside of your ad set, you have your ads. So there's the campaign and there's different types of campaign campaigns that we'll talk about. And then the ad set is where you're going to choose your targeting, your audience and your placement where you want where you want to show your ad, in this case, Instagram. And then your ads is your creative, the text, the video, the image, the carousel, the you know scroll through images, however you wanna set that up. The creative part, that's your ad. And I have a video on how to set up structure and name campaign ad sets and ads to just be efficient and organized. I think it's a really good video. I know it's helped a lot of people, it's my way, it's, there's no like standard of this is the right way to set everything up, but it's just like some little things that I do to make it a little bit easier on myself. And for running Facebook ads, I do recommend that you set up a Facebook business manager account. I've got videos on how to set one up and tutorial walkthroughs uh, showing you what how to use everything inside of there. But long story short, business manager lets you house multiple Facebook pages, multiple Instagram pages, multiple ad accounts, multiple pixels, add or remove people to any of those things that I just mentioned, and you can house all of that in one dashboard. So if you're gonna ever do more than just running Instagram ads for your own personal Instagram account, but even if you are, I mean, just because you also have a Facebook page with, I don't know, I just, Facebook business, it's free, and it's really easy, and it's helpful if you're going to gr grow advertising or stuff that you're working on with Facebook Instagram ads. So I would recommend setting that up. And that's what I'm inside of right here. I'm actually inside of my ads manager, inside of the Facebook business manager for one of my ad accounts. But anyways, once you're inside of your ads manager, however you want to get inside of there, click this blue, click this green create button. That's going to bring up this box. And this is where we're going to choose our campaign type. I'll show you first how to do, if you're just trying to get more followers, take even just take a post that's already on your Instagram send it to an audience and use that to get more followers to your account, grow your account, get more followers. We'll do that first. Then I'll talk about if you're selling something on your website, what you would want to do in that case. You know, you're running at you're running Instagram ads to drive people to your website to buy something. I'll show you what what you would want to do for that. And then the third one is lead generation if you just want to collect emails, addresses, whatever so you can continue to communicate and contact people. Lead gen, I'll show you how to set that up. So First, um, brand awareness or reach, in my opinion, are good ones for if you just want to grow your Instagram account. Uh, and you can hover over the eye and get more information on which one of those, you know, with the difference between each one. But brand awareness is gonna show your ads to people who are most likely to remember them. And then reach is gonna show it to the maximum number of people. So reach is just like, we're gonna show this to everybody we can for as cheap of a cost as possible. And then brand awareness is going to do a little bit 
I'm gonna work a little bit harder at finding people who will be most likely to remember your ads. And I know it's really easy to just ask the question like, which one should I use? But the truth, like the best way you should answer that question and all questions like that when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads is to run a test and see for yourself. So if your question is, should I run a brand awareness or a reach campaign? Run both, run a brand awareness campaign, run a reach campaign, keep everything inside them the same. The only difference is the campaign type. So then you can clearly see, did the brand awareness campaign work better for me or did the reach campaign work better for me or did it just not matter at all? That's called AB testing. That's called split testing. It's, you've got an original, you create a copy of it, a duplicate, change one variable to see if that variable makes things better or worse. Hopefully it makes it better. So then you've just improved your ad and now you're spending your ad budget more effectively. That's the whole idea behind A-B testing and check out this video right here for a great video on A-B testing. You should absolutely from the very beginning all the way to the very end and every step in between be A-B testing, be split testing. So let's just roll with a reach campaign right now. I'll click that. And then right here, if you wanna click this little arrow, it gives you the option to name your campaign, ad set and ad right here. If you wanna do that, you can in my how to set up structure and name your ad, your campaigns, ad sets, and ads videos. I mentioned that I personally like to set this up after I've chosen my ad set targeting placement ad creative so that way I can create names based off of all the stuff that I've chosen. In this case, I haven't really chosen everything yet so I personally skip over that so I'm gonna click continue. Okay, now it brings into this section. If you look right here, we're still in a new campaign section and then after this page, we'll move into a new ad set section and then into the new ad section. So first, again, it's got an option right here for you to throw, give it a name if you want. Special ad categories you're required to declare if your ads are related to credit, employment, housing, social issues, elections, or politics. And again, it, uh, even if you're not new to ads, I, like I, I, I should take my own advice here and go read up again on this stuff. But Facebook over the years has become way more strict about what kind of ads you can run, what kind of words you can use in your ads, what kinds of images, and then it's created all these special categories and stuff. So I would highly recommend you go read through all the pool, all the policies, <laughs> rules, and special ad category information, just really get familiar with that. Cause it sucks if you go run an ad in Facebook just cause it's Facebook is like, nope. And now your ad account just got disabled and that's a whole hassle. So best way to avoid that is to read up, uh, get familiar upfront with what those rules and policies are and abide by them if you don't wanna get your account shut down. Okay, campaign details section right here. Buying type, if you click edit, I'm pretty sure this is only gonna allow us auction right now. And that's how it works. That's how you buy or pay for ads. Um, basically, you can look at it as there's ad space that you're buying. Like there's a, a space in a bunch of people's feeds and you're gonna buy that spot in their feed. And the way you're gonna do that, especially when there's other people that wanna buy into that same spot, is via an auction where uh, you're gonna basically bid on that spot against everybody else who wants it and Facebook's gonna take a combination of things. It's not just who bids the most, it's that plus ad performance, account history, stuff like that. Several things that factor in, but basically there's an auction where people are bidding on the spot and then Facebook picks and assigns, uh, you know, out of those people which ad they're gonna show. Campaign objective, so in this case, we already chose that, but if you wanted to change it again, here's how you could do that. And you've got to show more options right here for if you want to set a campaign spending limit. So this is pretty helpful if you want, you know, if you know, especially if something were, to, if you were to launch the campaign and something were to happen to you, it would just keep running. Like someone's got to come in and turn it off unless you give it an end date or a campaign spending limit. And so here's a nice way to do that. Uh, just give that a click and then input the amount that you want to set as the campaign limit. A-B test right here. This section is where you can, again, go check out my A-B test video for a full tutorial on how to do, and you definitely should be doing A-B test, split test. That section is how you would start to set that up. And then right here, we've got the campaign budget section. So campaign budget, budget optimization is going to be if you've got multiple ad sets, multiple ads inside of your campaign, and you want Facebook to decide how to take your budget and distribute it across all of those, then you would wanna use campaign budget optimization. But that doesn't mean at all 
that Facebook is going to evenly distribute your budget across all the ad sets and ads. It's going to pick and choose which ones it distributes the money to. So if you do want ad sets to be tested evenly, uh, then I, I would recommend that you do not set a campaign budget optimization. Now we're in the ad set section. So we've got ad set name. Again, I like to go fill everything out, then come back and give it the name. Uh, Facebook page, you'll need to have a Facebook page selected. Dynamic ad creative, uh, this is one you'll want to test and just try out for yourself. But basically, like it says, you give it different elements, headlines, images, videos, blah, blah, blah. It'll combine all that in various ways. It'll throw it out there and test it. And then you've got the budget and schedule section. This is, so this is setting the budget and schedule at the ad set level. Again, if you wanted to go do it at campaign, you'd need to do it at the campaign level. Um, but I personally, especially at the beginning of things, when you're first starting out testing and trying to find good good audiences and advertising and everything, uh, I prefer to set budgets, really just do everything at the ad set level. So that way I can make sure everything that I want to is getting tested with as much budget that I want it to test. So you can set a daily budget, you can set a lifetime budget, and then right here is how you change that. You could set it as low as a buck, I think. Yeah, you can set it as low as a buck and then you can go as high as you want. And then here's where you can set a start and end date like I talked about if you wanna do that. All right, then here's the audience section. This is where you're really starting to hone in on your targeting. So audiences, I've got videos on audiences. I'm not gonna jump into that right now, but if you wanna, if you've created audiences, custom audiences or lookalike audiences, right here's where you can select them. Locations, it's currently set to United States. If you wanna change that, just do that right here pull up the whole map, you can search out specific cities. So if I did like San Francisco, and then you can even build out certain radiuses around it. So if I clicked right here and I change this to put that to just a one mile radius. And then also this is, I know it's easy to skip over this, but locations right here, this little drop down menu, this is where you can choose people living in or recently, people living in, people recently in, or people traveling in this location. So think about how you'd want to use those. Then right here is where you can set age, gender, male or female, or both of those. And then you've got detailed targeting. So let's just take this for example. I've got this USB-C dongle that I, so I can plug all this stuff into my MacBook. So let's just say I'm selling these things, um, MacBook adapters. So I would type in right here, um, MacBook. And then it's got some different options here for me. It's got MacBook, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, MacBook Family, MacBook Retina. So there are some different audiences that I could target. And you can see as I hover over them over here in this in the box here on the right, it gives you a size and that's the estimated audience size for that interest. So if I select MacBook Pro, that's a 16 million sized audience, but it's set to just the USA, people living in the USA. So if you look over here in the right, that ends up being a potential reach of 85,000, which is a, or sorry, 58,000. Read that, <laughs> a little dyslexic there. But yeah, 58,000, so that's the size of the audience. So MacBook Pro, that's just one interest. Um, if I typed in Apple, I've got all these different interests right here that could potentially work. If I typed in, I can maybe type something in like USB, yeah, C USB type C. So maybe that's an audience, you know, that's a 15, uh, 15 million people in that audience. But then maybe I wanna do something like target my competitors, customers, which is a really cool thing that you're able to do with Facebook, Instagram ads. And so uh, another company that would sell, well, let's just here look. So these guys are Hyperdrive. Let's see if they pop up. No, so they don't pop up. Uh, well, Anchor is another like charger company I know or adapter, uh, they do chargers, so it might be different, but maybe that, yeah, so Anchor right here, mobile chargers. Okay, so they're chargers. That might be a little bit different, but maybe that is a, a niche that I wanted to target. But anyways, that's how that works. And then one thing that's really cool, so if we went like this, if we went MacBook Pro, and then click this option right here to narrow audience, and then I can select, uh, so if this time I did USB-C, and actually I think this would be pretty decent targeting, actually. I would, I would this is targeting I would, set up and run a test on if I was selling something like this. I'd go MacBook Pro through, narrowed through. So they first, it has to be people that live in the US that like MacBook Pros that also narrowed through like USB type C. And so now if we look over here, I've got a really specific narrowed audience of 
5,800 people, and those are gonna be people that will know exactly what's going on when I throw an ad at them of something like this, especially if I'm if it's like a video or a picture of, uh, you know, someone struggling trying to plug stuff into their MacBook, like create that ad, throw that to them in their Instagram feed. These people that like MacBook Pros, USB Type-C, they'll know exactly what's going on. And if it's a good product, like really good chance that they're gonna click through and buy. All right, then right here, you've got options for languages. So in this case, uh, let's just do English. So lost 100 people in my potential reach there, we're at 5,700. Now if we look at the placement section, so automatic placements, that's just you saying, hey, Facebook, show this ad wherever you want in all the different places that you can show it. And what are all the different places where Amazon, or <laughs> Amazon, sorry, Facebook could show your ad, click on manual placements, and now we can see all the different options for where Facebook can show our ad. And it's a lot, frankly. And again, A-B testing, uh, especially if you're new at stuff. Like it's just so good to actually run tests, get some real experience and data back out of it. But like, I I'm gonna recommend manual placements here, but I think an A-B test with an automatic placements, also a really smart thing to, to test. So, but in this case, right here it'll show you first platforms and you also have devices option right here if you wanted to choose just mobile or just desktop but platforms let's click off facebook off audience network messenger is already off so we just have instagram selected now and you'll see that instagram feed instagram explore and instagram stories are selected those are the three places you can choose to show your instagram ads story feed and explore section. Now, if you wanna figure out which one of those is the best place to show your ad, you know, cause it's different, right? Sometimes it'll work better, it might work better in explore or it might work better as a story. And so if you wanna figure out which one's best, you could have all three selected in here and run the ad. But when you do that, you're leaving Facebook to decide how much money and budget, how much testing it gives to each one of those placements. And so if you really want to have full control over that, then I would recommend A-B testing, split testing, Instagram stories versus Instagram explore versus Instagram feed, getting that data back, seeing for yourself which one out of those three works best for you. And it's really gonna depend a whole, especially what we're talking about here, it depends a ton on the ad creative that you're running. At first, it's gonna depend on who you're targeting, like you gotta get that right. And then you gotta work on getting a, an ad that they want to see that encourages them to take whatever action you want them to take. You gotta put a good ad in front of them. And what constitutes a good ad might be different in a story versus the explore section versus feed. I mean, just think about what you post to your Instagram feed versus what you post to your story. Or just think about what you view in your feed versus what you view in your story. Very different, right? Like it's, it, it's basically different content. So you gotta, bring all that and you gotta like really consider all of that when you're choosing story versus explore like that stuff matters a lot Every, so basically the the links in the chain here are audience creative and then what you send them to like if it's a website and you're trying to sell something target the right audience put an ad in front of them that actually gets them to click to your website but then your website has to convince them to purchase and if any three of those are off if you got the best ad and the best website, targeted the wrong people, not gonna work. You targeted the right people, wrong ad, best website, they didn't click to your website because it was the wrong ad. Like, so you really have to get all of it lined up for it to work right. And if you hover over each one here, it'll show you on the right, it'll give you a little preview. So Instagram feed, it's saying we recommend square, one by one images and vertical four by five videos. If we hover over uh, where's stories? Stories, they'll say we recommend full screen, vertical, nine by 16 images or videos. Because remember, it's more of a square in the Instagram Explorer, Instagram feed, but in a story, you've got the whole vertical screen that you can use. So anyways, there's some more about that. Right here, you're gonna be able to choose specific mobile devices and operating systems. So if you wanted to choose Android or iOS, uh, optimization and delivery. So you can change your optimization for ad delivery. That just means like, uh, what you want Facebook to focus on as far as delivering your ad. So if you click edit, it's currently set to reach because we chose a reach campaign. You could also set it to impressions if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted Facebook to optimize to deliver your ads based around impression. Bid control is optional. I recommend when you're first learning and getting data back, 
don't put a bid control, but once you've ran enough and got data back and you can understand how much things are costing, then I think that's a good time to start messing around with bid control, click more. I'll click show more options here. And this is where you can choose if it lets you. So different campaign types will allow you to or not allow you to choose different options when you're doing stuff like this. But in this case, it's going, it's not going to let you change anything. So you're going to be charged per impression and the delivery type is standard. So I'm just going to click next now. And now it's going to bring us into the ad section where we actually set up creative image, video, copy, text. I know a lot of people already know this, but I also know some people don't copywriting is just the word for the text that's in your ad, the caption, the headline, whatever you want to call it. When text is written out, that's called copywriting copy. So just in case anyone was a little confused about that. So you've got your ad name right here. Make sure you have a Facebook page and Instagram account selected. If you're not running it to Instagram, you don't have to select an Instagram account, but if you are, you do have to add setup. Uh, so this is where you can choose single image or video or to select for a carousel. I'm just going to leave it set to single image or video right here. So it's already got an image selected, but if I out here, I'll just clear it. And right here, if you click add media there, you can add image or video. And then you've got your primary text right here. And that's where you can set that Add a website URL. Okay. For running it in this case, because the example right now is to run Instagram ads to get as many followers as possible. Don't put a website URL. Don't even put your Instagram link there. Just don't put one because what's going to be the most organic, easiest, efficient way for people for you to get a follower is for people to just click your profile icon and then follow you from there. Uh, using a website URL is just going to complicate the whole thing. It's going to open up another little page inside. Like you just want them to click your profile and that's going to be the easiest organic best way to do it. So if you're just trying to get followers, you just want them to go to your Instagram profile. And so you don't want to use a website link. Okay. Branded content languages tracking for the campaign type for what we're doing here. Don't need to worry about any of those. And so then you just come down here and click publish and then your ad goes into review and it'll sit there for a little bit. Could be hours, could even be a day. Um, but once it's approved, then your ad goes live and your ad starts showing up in people's Instagram feed stories, explore section, whatever placements you chose. Okay. Now back here in the campaign objective section, where you're choosing your campaign type. Uh, so if you want, if you're selling something on your website, what you want to choose is the conversions campaign. And if you're wanting to collect leads, then you'll want to choose a lead generation campaign. And so for a more in-depth tutorial on lead generation, go watch this video right here where I break down how to set up a lead generation campaign. And for conversions, everything's pretty much the same as we just did. I'll show you here real fast. The only difference is going to be the pixel and the events. So, uh, your pixel is going to be, you're going, to, it's just a little string of numbers that you go put on your website and that syncs your website to Facebook so that Facebook can track everything that it needs to, to be able to tell you through this ad, how much money did you make? Did you make money? Did you lose money? That sort of thing. And so you've got to have your pixel set up on your website so that Facebook can track everything. And what it's tracking are events. And so uh, here's where we can choose which event we want Facebook to track. So I'm in a dummy one right now where it's not set up, but you'll see some of these are the different events. We've got, for example, add payment info, purchase, a lead, initiate checkout. So if you're trying to track, if you're trying to get people to buy a product off of your website, I would definitely recommend that you use purchases as your conversion event so that Facebook is tracking purchases. And then what it also does is it optimizes for that conversion event. So it's going to work harder at finding people that purchase. If you set it as, you know, um, ad payment info, it's going to work on getting as many people as possible for the best price possible to add their payment info. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they ended up checking out and making the full purchase. So if you want purchases to happen, I think it's good to optimize, choose your event as purchases. And then everything else inside the ad set section is the same. You'll just select all the options that you want. The last thing you want to pay attention to is right here in the tracking section, uh, right before you're about to publish your ad, you just again, want to make sure that you have your pixel set up and that it's active, that it's showing a green dot right here and not a red dot. Um, 
and that's that's pretty much it just for conversion campaigns make sure you've got that pixel set up and the events are set up and working and then just know which event is the right event for you to be using and tracking yeah.